Hey everybody, welcome back. This is Miss Faye and this is my world. Today's topic is making good choices and decisions can improve your life. Making good choices and decisions can really improve your life. Before we get started, I want to say welcome. Welcome to the channel. Welcome to all the new viewers, the new subscribers, and welcome to you who have been with me from the beginning. I really appreciate you. Now, to start us off, we do have uh, a letter here. And this letter is entitled, Do I Sue? or contact building department inspectors. Okay. All right. Um, before we get started into this, I, I want to uh, put out a disclaimer is that I'm not, uh, I'm not legal. I'm spiritual. Okay. I am spiritual. So the answers that I give to you will be from a spiritual perspective. You need to understand that because I know I get a lot of letters about a lot of different issues. And there is a spiritual component in, in a lot of things, especially if you're involved in it. And I can speak on that. But as far as legalities and all of that are concerned, you know, you need to speak to people who are experts in that field. Okay, so let's read this letter and see if we can uh, shine some light on this. Okay, here we go. I have written you before regarding a negligent landlord. We were originally supposed to be friends, and due to my insurance claim for busted water pipes, I was given a budget to live wherever I choose to live. I discussed my misfortune with a female minister. I kind of remember uh, you writing me before about this minister that had the apartment. And she was supposed to be a, a friend of yours. And she was a friend from church. And I was unaware at the conversation that she owned an apartment building. And she invited me to stay at her property. Okay. I was excited, thinking God answered my prayer because I had to move quickly. Well, yeah, uh, okay, I can understand you feeling this way. But let's see what happened. I moved into the property, and as soon as I gave her the first payment, she never spoke to me again. I even tried to take her to dinner. And she has rejected the invitation. Okay, let's stop right here. Now, you considered her as being a friend or an acquaintance because you knew her from church. You knew her as a minister and you knew her from church. Okay, so you approached her. She said, yes, I have an apartment. All right, so you gave her the payment and went into the apartment, and all of a sudden she has nothing to say to you anymore. Well, you know, I believe I told you before in the other letter, she wanted to keep it business. She doesn't want biz to mix friendship with business. Okay, you know, some people are like that. When it comes to business, they turn the friendship right off to show you that they weren't really your friend in the first place. It, it, it was all about business. It's all about business. Okay. Every day I was being asked to sign all this paperwork and it was distracting and annoying and a distraction to my business. All of a sudden, two weeks into living in the apartment building, the tub is backed up with filthy water and the bathroom faucet isn't connected. And I was wondering why there was why there was water all over the bathroom floor. The landlord has sent out a handyman twice to fix the plumbing, but these people are not licensed nor qualified for the job. Yeah, because she's trying to save money. <laughs> you know, a lot of uh, 
apartment owners, you know, they just hanging on like everybody else. They really can't afford to send out high quality people to uh, keep up these apartments, you see, because then they wouldn't be making any money. So they find these little handymen to come out and patch it up for you. But, but for you, for you, I recall in your last letter that you got a large sum of money for you to find a place to live while they were repairing your home. Okay, so again, you trying to save money. So you went to your friend instead of going to a quality place where you go in and see everything is perfect. You see, and go on and pay the money and live there and live comfortably. No, you're going to try to save money. You just like your friend. You get what you pay for. Okay, you just like her. I had a horrible rash all over my body that itched and burned. And we had a measles breakout in my area. And I got frightened. Okay, let's look at this before I go into what you did. You say you got frightened. Don't live your life in fear. Because if you do that, you're going to be frightened every day about something. About something. And what do you do with this fear? Where do you place your trust? In the doctor. You run off to the doctor so that he can give you all sorts of medications just to patch it up. Because remember, the doctor doesn't cure anything. They don't cure any, they don't have any cures. They can patch it up and just calm it down so that you can live with it. People. Understand that. Quit being fearful of everything that comes down the pike. Why live your life in fear? If you're on your spiritual path, you won't be fearful of anything. Because you know that you are divinely protected. All right? People, get this through your head. There's no reason to live in fear. And everything that the system comes up with, like covid and all this other stuff that comes running down the pipe, killing some people just to frighten you. Then you run out to the doctor and get your shot. You know, and all the people that went out to get the COVID shot, now they got to go back and get the boosters. You have no idea what this medication is doing to your system. And every time you go to the doctor and get these medications, you don't know what it's doing to you inside. It's not helping your spirituality. I can tell you that. It's blocking it. Okay. All right. All right. Here you go. You got frightened about the measles breakout. So you ran off to the doctor. They examined the rashes and said that I didn't have measles. However, the breakout was due to bacteria growth in the water. From this filthy tub. Okay, so you <laughs> you see that your tub is filthy, and you still taking baths in it. I I don't understand it. I don't understand it. If you go to a place and you see it's filthy, you know, um, I've been in places that weren't spotless. But I know how to uh, disinfect. I know how to get my cleaner and scrub it down and Clorox it out, kill all the germs or whatever, and then take your bath or whatever. You understand? But I don't. I don't understand what's going on here. I could no longer use the tub or bathroom faucet, and began to boil water for usage. And for the past two weeks, I've been going somewhere else to shower. This doesn't make sense. This does not make any sense. Any sense. When uh, your pipes burst in your home, I remember from your last letter, you got a bundle of money. 
in the thousands to go wherever you wanted to live. You had enough money to go to a nice a luxury apartment. And you telling me that for the past two weeks, you stuck in this dump where you have to boil your water and go someplace else to take a shower. This doesn't make sense. Some, something is not connecting here. I purchased a filter for the kitchen sink and would brush my teeth and wash my face in the filtered water. My teeth and gums are very sore. I've even noticed drips of blood from my five pound dog's teeth. And I began to boil his water and give him bottled water only. <laughs> okay. This, this sounds pretty pathetic, if you ask me. I don't understand why you're living like this. It must be something in your mindset that is making you do this. And uh, from what I could see and from what I can understand is that the money that you have, you must have it earmarked for something else. And you were looking to live as cheap as possible until your home is done. Okay. But still, th this is awful. You're going to live in filth? You're going to live in filth just to save a few dollars? Listen, you have a lack mindset. Lack. Okay. You don't believe that the universe is all powerful and the universe ha has abundant supply. You live like you don't believe that in a state of not having enough. Not having enough. Not realizing that the universe can always supply you with enough and more. But you got to know it. You got to believe it. For you to live like this, the universe will keep you like this. Because you are showing the universe that this is the way you like. You like living in filth. You like having to go other places to take your showers and boil your water and all this. You are telling the universe that you are content with living like this. And the universe is not going to change it for you. It will continue to supply the same the same thing. All of this chaos and trouble is going to keep on giving it to you. Now, you say here, my doctor put me on seven topical ointments and soaps for the breakout and two pills for the itching and burning. Immediately after the doctor's appointment, I gave the landlord 30 days notice to move out. Okay. All right, so you went to the doctor and got all of your pills and ointments, and I guess that made you feel better. You see, because that's where your trust is. Your trust is in man, in the doctor. You see, you don't have trust in the divine at all. You've already shown it a thousand times. Okay. I've only been living there for six weeks, and it's been very traumatizing for me. And every time I hear water, I get flashbacks. You get flashbacks from the water pipes bursting in your house? That's no good. There's something else going on with you that I believe you need to address. Okay? Something going on inside of you that is creating all of this chaos in your life. And I believe I talked to you about this before. It's all about you but you want to blame other people for your for these issues. You want to point the finger at everybody else. Now, you want to know if you should sue the landlord, you should call the building inspectors or whatever, when you are creating this havoc in your own life. You're doing it. I also have a client who just so happened to be a director of the building department and city inspectors and he's been very upset about it 
He wants me to file a complaint with the building department who will also get the landlord in court. I hired a private property inspector and they came to the property and saw lots of violations. I did this to protect myself in case the landlord tried to enforce the rents after I move out. Uh, I don't understand that. After you move out, what do you care what she does? After you move out, what do you want her punished? <laughs> Is this a revenge tactic? Tactic? You moving out in 30 days and you tolerated this for six weeks. You see, you already tolerated it. And then you say you were traumatized. You did it to yourself. I'm telling you. And you keep doing it to yourself. Do you recommend that I sue the landlord? No. I don't recommend that you sue her. You're moving out in 30 days. Move out and leave it alone. And work on yourself. Do you recommend that I request my money back? That I paid her including money for medical expenses and medication. Well, you can approach her since she is a minister. A minister at your church. Maybe you should approach her at church. You know, in a Christian sort of way. And uh, ask her would she reimburse you for your medical expenses. Ask. Okay. That's pretty much what you can do. It's ask. Now, if your medical expenses were terribly high, and I mean into the hundreds of dollars, and it can be sometimes. You know, if your medical expenses and your medication was like $500 or something like that, and she refused to pay, then you'd want to take her to small claims court. And then you want to take her to small claims court you would take all your medical records that the doctor gave you that, it, that um, it was caused by the filth in the apartment, you know, these rashes or whatever. And you probably get your money for that. Now, you say, I have never experienced anything like this. It's a landlord's responsibility to provide a safe, clean environment. And although the property looked clean when I moved in, I had no idea there was a plumbing and furnace issue until I moved in and experienced what I went through. Well, as soon as you figured out there was a plumbing issue and a furnace problem, why didn't you move out? You could have just turned around and moved right out, not even unpacked your bags. But you stayed there for six weeks. You see? You stay there. You say here, um, this is this filthy tub full of bacteria water and my skin breaks out. Well, that's on you too. <laughs> that's on you too. You see, why didn't you clean it? Why do you make sure that it was spotless before you put your body in there? That, that. Well, I received karma if I call building inspectors or if I sue the landlord for personal injury or do I just ask her to return my money? First, I would ask her for your medical expenses. I, she's not going to give you the money back for the rent. She ain't going to give you the money back for that. But for your medical expenses and uh, your doctor appointment, whatever that costs, all of that, Ask her for that money first, and if she does not comply, then take her to small claims, and good luck with that, okay? I don't want karma based on what has transpired, but I feel as though my back is against the wall, and I feel deceived and ripped off and taken advantage of due to me having to leave my residence quickly due to broken water pipes. Well, that's on you. That, was a, that wasn't on her. You had to move your place quick, okay? And she was there. She had a place. You accepted the place. She ain't forced you to go there. 
That was your decision. You went there. You say, okay. You took the place. You didn't realize it had some problems. Once you realized it had some problems, you should have told her, it's got some problems. I'm moving out. Move out. But I suppose you stayed there because you were hoping that she would fix the problem. But she kept sending out uh, handyman because she's trying to save money too. You see, I'm pretty sure this is an investment property for her. You see, and she's got to keep this going so she can pay her own mortgage. You know, it's a lot of people that, that do things like this. I understand it. So, um, as far as karma is concerned, as long as you don't have ill will about her and shoot her, you know, spells from your mouth and from your thoughts, evil spells, then no karma is due to you. No bad karma is going to come back to you. But for you to uh, call a building inspector and uh, go to small claims court, no, that's not karmic. No, that's called standing up for yourself, standing your ground. You see, that's, that's called loving yourself and taking care of yourself. That's what that's called. So, no, there's no karma attached to that. So, um... You ask about the building inspectors. I mean, what's the point? What's the point of calling the building inspector if you're going to be out of there in a minute? You should already be packing up your things. They should already be in boxes. So what you need the building inspector for? You want to close her down? You want to shut her down? Is that why? If that's your reason, yes then karma will come back to you because you're only doing it to get back at her. You're not doing it for your benefit because you're leaving. You understand? But if you call the building inspector to get to close her down, yeah, karma will visit you for that. Okay? And from my understanding, I you know, you know, I believe that you your business, you know, you have your own business. And you don't want your business affected. So you don't do anything against somebody else's business. You, you just let the universe take care of them. You understand? So I hope that you understand that. And uh, no, it's not a good idea for you to uh, seek revenge on her or to get back at her or anything like that. You know, ask her again. If she will pay for your medical expenses from this issue and see what she says. And I would approach her in a very friendly way. Like I said, approach that church, you know, when she's in the spirit, <laughs> you know, and uh, sit down with her and show her your medical expenses and ask her, will she reimburse you for that? Okay. Because, um, Maybe for the 30 days that you're there, well, I don't know what you're, how you paid her or if you had to pay her um, security and all that kind of money, which you probably did, which means that she's got all your money anyway, and she would have to give that medical money back to you. Plus, you know, your security deposit, you should be able to get all of that back when you leave her and only paying for the time that you were there. Okay. Anything outside of that is, would not be correct. Okay. So, um, just chalk it up and move on with your life. But you have money. Put yourself in a very nice place. Don't go around looking for friends to put you up in some shabby place they have. Just go on and pay the money. You know, they have uh, nice hotels for short stay that you can go to a nice hotel. You got your shower, you got to clean, plus the, the maid to come in and clean up at, and all of that. You see, and some of them, you can do a suite where they have like a little kitchenette where you can lightly cook in your room and things like that. So there's no reason for you to be traumatized in a state with this person's apartment 
That was your choice, people. And you can't blame on the other people when you make bad choices. So I hope that you understand the message today. And I really hope that it helps someone. Now, those of you who have questions that you would like for me to answer, my email address is in the description. And also, if you're looking for your affirmations and your movement for today, also the link is in the description. I appreciate all of you. Thank you so much for supporting this channel. Thank you for your comments and your letters. And a very special thank you for those who leave a donation. I wish you all the very best and happiness. And I really hope to see you next time.